channel. Today, you guys, I am going to be doing part two of depression and mental health. Um, these are some of the things that I explained in my last video of the reason why um, you haven't been seeing me for the past couple of months, well, actually last year. Um, and even the times when I did start my YouTube, I was going through depression, but it wasn't as bad. Um, there has been times when I was doing YouTube full force and I stopped, picked it up, stopped, picked it up, stopped. Is because I've been battling it. And you know how sometimes, you know, we go through things, we try to keep it on the hush hush, on the low low. We try to deal with it with the best way that we can. And sometimes we just don't try to deal with it. Um, we try to go about our day, day-to-day -day life, struggles, work, trying to keep busy and um, thinking that's going to actually help us. But actuality is not helping at all. Because right now in the black community, mental health, depression, suicide, right now is at an all-time high. So, um, by me having COVID and working from home and actually have to sit with myself and um, not staying busy, it made me realize, like, hey... Um, I'm really suffering in silence and that's part of my weight gain um, along on top of that health issues that I was going through with COVID. COVID alone has played a big issue on my health and my body you guys. Um, before I was doing my morning exercise, me and Mommy 3 exercise and um, I started back exercising, like I stated in my last video, I am going to pick it back up, but I am going to try something totally different that I'm going to introduce to this channel. Um, it's going to be part of my vlog. Um, right now, we are working out the kinks to it. I'm going to do like a little test run just to see if y'all like it or not. So once I get started, I'm going to just do a video i'm not even gonna announce it i'm just gonna get started and then i just want y'all to let me know whether or not y'all would like to see this part of my exercise regimen okay so besides that um i am going through counseling i am talking to um i call her my big sister is someone that i congregate with on a weekly basis and she's a counselor um she also deal with youth and adults who like struggling through depression and mental health and you know day-to-day -day things so i talked to her on a regular basis and we began to dig into my past and things that i've been
know what it was um i couldn't pinpoint it but as you get older and you start to realize a lot of things you start to come to the realization of you know things of your past childhood a lot of us suffer from childhood trauma and that's one of the things that i've been going through suffering through childhood trauma that has been plaguing in my adult life a lot of us are stuck in our younger days of things that had traumatized us and things that we have seen with our own eyes things that we've been through to where it is actually plaguing your adult life there are a lot of people that's in their 40s 50s 60s 70s 80 years old that still traumatized for things that happened in their past that they have not dealt with especially in the black community we have always been told all our lives you know whatever stays in this household whatever happens in this household stays in the household you know you don't tell and you know it's time out for all that foolishness you know we understand that our parents live at a different generation at that time but not even realizing they went through a lot of trauma as well you know and we can't fault them for that but the older generation have to realize like the new generation you know, we're not putting up with a lot of that stuff. We are speaking out. We are being more forthcoming of how we feeling. We are expressing ourselves. Some expressing the negative. <laughs> well, I'm just going to keep it all the way honest. And some are just basically letting people know what they've been through. And then not only than that, you got people that are coming at them because they are expressing some of the things that they've been through. Why? They need help. They, they are getting out all that frustration, all that anger, bitterness, hatred that they had bottled inside. I suggest that anybody who's going through childhood trauma, try to open up, talk about it. You know, get a camera, record yourself. If you don't want no one to see it, at least talk to the camera to be able to express your feelings because the same ones who saying oh you shouldn't say nothing you know you shouldn't put your business out there but the same ones who may see that person later on who may have no longer here anymore so you don't want that to happen because the guilty contribute is like man you know they did try to say something and i should have got them help well it's too late for all that it's too late because when a person leaves this earth, you can't say nothing. You can't go back and change what happened. You can't say nothing to that person because they are no longer here. So I just wanted to get that out because me going through my counseling is, has helped me. My husband do know the things that I have been through. And um, he told me, he was like, Mia... I can pray for you. I can let you talk to me. But some of the things that you've been through, I haven't experienced. So you need to talk to someone who may have been through or get you a counselor. So that's exactly what we did. And I'm glad that we did that. Let me take this gum out of my mouth. Chloe. Now I'm glad that we did because it has helped me tremendously. Like I stated, a lot of things have happened during my childhood that I have seen that my mom went through. Um, and, you know, when you see things with your own two eyes, I think some parents don't realize when you have children and your children see the things that you went through not even realizing those same things affect your children as well and sometimes those parents don't take out the time to sit their children down but like you know i see i know that y'all see you know we are going through this you know we're gonna get through it it's gonna be okay and you know at least try to get counseling for your for your family as a whole and individually that's one of the biggest things that i have tried to break that curse that generational curse with my own children we talk to them on a regular basis 
um, we allow them to be able to open up and talk to us and express to us how they feel, like if anybody hurt their feelings, you know, we allow them to be able to express themselves and let us know, you know, like things that they're going through, things that they may be battling. And it has made things better in our household when we do that. It's okay to talk to your kids. It's okay to let them know, like, hey, I know that this is happening. You know, how did you feel about that? You know, has it, you know, changed anything? You know what I'm saying? So, it's okay to talk to your kids. You know, um, my mom was a single mother, and it's five of us. I have three brothers. I have two sisters what i had a sister with i had three sisters one of my sisters which is my dad's daughter um that's next to me she ended up passing away i want to say a couple of days before christmas so she's no longer with me longer with us i really didn't know her um i only seen her one time in my life but my mom did say i seen her a couple of times but i was so young i don't even remember but my dad wasn't in my life like how I needed my dad to be in my life to tell me, you know, to show me, you know, about men, you know, how a, a lady should act towards men, you know, what to look out when it comes down to relationships and, you know, sex and stuff like that. You know, my daddy wasn't around for that. You know, when my daddy lived in New Jersey, we lived in South Carolina. My mama was a single parent. I was raising, a, you know, my brothers and sisters and I, she did the best thing, you know, the best that she can with, you know, having five children. That's hard on any single parent, you know. My dad was away in New Jersey. You know, I may have seen him maybe once a year. There has been times where I haven't seen him at all for a whole year. And when he did come down, we make the best of it for the days that he was here. And um, I distinctively remember that, um, <laughs> this is a crazy story. Uh, I think my uncle Walter had passed away. And um, I was going out on a date to a movie. And I was like at 17 at the time. And I had talked to my mom, you know, basically, this was like on a Friday, Friday, I want to say evening. Um, the whole house was clean. See, when I was younger, when I wanted to do something or go somewhere with like with my friends or a school event or a football game or a school dance or anything like this, this is what I used to do. And my mom always used to say, yeah. There may be one time that she said no, but I didn't, it didn't matter. But my mama already knew I had our room clean because me and my sisters, we shared a room. We had a bunk bed and a single bed. We got the biggest room. Um, our room our room was clean. I cleaned her room, um, the bathroom. I even cleaned the living room and the kitchen. I may have straightened up my brother's room, but I don't know. Every, the whole house was clean, to be honest. My mama already knew when she came home from work, she was like, hmm. She already knew that I wanted something. And nine times out of the ten, she always let me go. So, um, uh, my dad had came down. Because I didn't know my dad had came down from New Jersey. And um, the boyfriend that I had at the time, uh, he took me to the movie theaters. We didn't go nowhere else. We didn't go out to eat. We didn't go to no hotel or nothing. We went straight to the movie theater, straight back home. Because that's exactly what he did. And my dad called me when I got back home. He was like, I didn't tell you to go to the movie theaters. I was like, I looked at the phone. I was like, huh? I said, first of all, I said, why are you now waiting until I'm almost 18 to try to tell me what to do? I mean, like, where was you at from the time from birth up to 17 years old? You wasn't there. I said, I only see you maybe once a year, if that. Come down. And, you know, we spend time with each other. I said, my mom is my mom and my dad. She basically raised me. I said, she made that decision to let me know whether or not it was okay for me to go to the movie theaters or not. So, 
I was kind of down about that because I had like tears in my eye because, you know, that was the first time ever that I have ever talked to my dad like that. Like, I respect my dad. I love my dad. I'm a daddy's girl. I can talk to my dad about any and everything. He thinks that I'm his mom, which I am, even though I'm his oldest daughter. Anyways, but I do talk to my dad. And, um... So that was the first time ever. And then my dad and us, we apologized to each other as how we talked to each other. But, you know, we've been cool ever since then. But we just laughed it off. Anyways. But I have seen that my mom went through a lot. And, you know, some of the things that she went through. There is a story time that I'm going to tell about the things that my mom went through. But, um... This is going to be strictly about my depression. So a lot of the things that I've seen that my mom went through at a very young age, it has stuck with me from the time that that happened up until now. Like I can remember everything distinctively. Like I've been not pronouncing that right. I can remember everything as if it happened yesterday, you know, and I really don't talk too much about it because I try to let go and forgive and, um, and you know how sometimes you just think that you forgave somebody or you forgive the things that have happened and then later on, boom, like a certain memory or a certain smell or a certain something like rendezvous kind of remind you of what happened. So that's what I've been going through. And it, it's, it's like, dang, I thought I had let it go. And to come to find out that I did not let it go to where it was affecting me. It was affecting me on a the daily. There were has been times where I didn't want to get up out the bed and, you know, being sick on top of that. It's just like I had lost a lot of weight and stressing out. And um, it just, it was just so heavy on me, guys, to where... It was causing issues in my marriage. And um, my husband, he had pulled me to the side. He was like, babe, you want to seriously going to have to get help because right now it's not looking too good. He was like, I love you to death. I'd be there for you. I've been there for you. And I just want you to get some help. And I took that all in and I was like, I immediately started crying after we had the conversation. And I was like, Lord, you know, I'm battling with this. And I no longer want to continue to battle like this. I want to be able to get the help that I need so I can be free of this. You know, there are going to be times to where those old things try to come up but now I got the help that I need to be able to navigate through that and to be able to get the help that I need um so there's a couple of story times there has been some domestic violence um uh kidnapping uh, of my baby sister when she was a baby at the time for my godmother I can do a story time about that um uh, domestic violence that my mom went through, um, domestic violence that I went through, um, molestation with my sister that was next to me, and I went through it as well, so it's just like, a lot of that stuff just affecting, because, um, by me coming to truth, you know, I hear other stories and sometimes when you hear other stories and you see those stories of young girls, even boys, men, grown men who went through that. See, a lot of grown men and little boys went through that same thing as well. They just don't talk about it. But it's a lot of boys that went through the same thing as far as molestation. But, you know, you don't too much hear them talk about it. But I'm just glad that the Most High kept me through all of that to where I have a story to tell. I can be able to reach young women or, you know, young boys who may be going through that 
at this present story and I can be able to talk to them and let them know some of the things that I went through, but also give them solutions to overcome, you know, that obstacle, that situation that they went through. And I'm glad that I have gotten the help. I took out the time for myself to get the help that I needed. And um, if y'all wants me to do some story times, I can. Um, just comment in the comment section down below and let me know. Um, so, you know, I'm still going through counseling. I'm still going, getting the help that I need. And I'm glad that I am because, you know, like I stated, depression and mental health is at an all-time high right now. It really is in the black community. In the African American community, it really is at an all time high. That's why I constantly talk to my kids, checking up them, you know, speaking with them, um, you know, on an individual basis. And as a family, we constantly talking to our children, like, hey, how you doing? We tell them that we love them every night, good morning. We give them hugs and kisses, you know, to them, let them know, you know, things is not always going to be perfect. You know, this thing called life. You know, it's not going to be peaches and creams, but we, we're teaching y'all how to navigate through life. And, um, excuse me, my nose is running. So, we're going to let y'all know you will have some ups and downs. You're going to be, you know, you will have some struggles through life. And, you know, life ain't going to be all rainbows and peaches and cream and lollipops and, and, and you know skipping down the road um so we teaching them and giving them the tools to how to navigate through life and telling them the truth we always keep it real with our kids we give them the raw real deal you have to you have to i say when i was younger when i have children i said i'm gonna keep it all the way real i'm gonna tell them everything at a very young age and my oldest daughter will soon be 19 i have always told her when she was younger you know the real raw deal when it comes down to relationships when it comes down to sex all that stuff. We give them the raw, real deal. We don't leave nothing out. We don't sugarcoat them. We don't tell them about the birds and the bees. Because there ain't nothing, no such things as no birds and no bees. I don't know who came with that foolishness. But they need to cut that foolishness out. Parents need to stop talking about the birds and the bees in this store. Can't, no bird came and delivered no baby. Okay? Because if you don't keep it real with your kids, your kids is going to learn elsewhere. And I said I refuse to have my children to learn anything outside this house to where I can't open up my mouth and share with them the real raw deal. Okay? We keep it real at this house. A little too real. I'd rather for them to hear it from their parents than go out there and hear it from somebody else. We keep it all the way real. All the way real. About everything. And when I say real, my kids can let you know. They be like, yeah, my kids was like, Mom, uh, <laughs> you embarrass me. Excuse me. You embarrass me. And I was like, listen, I'm not embarrassing you. You probably don't like the way I am talking and keeping it real. But I'd rather for you to hear it out of my mouth than for you to hear. Because there's a lot of grown folks that don't know how to cook, don't know how to wash their clothes, don't know how to clean. They don't know how to clean themselves. They don't know nothing about sex, life, how to keep a house. Don't know how to pay bills, pump gas. Don't know how to conduct business, calling on the phone, balancing checkbooks, savings, banking. It's a lot of us that, especially in the African American community, it's just... Especially when your parents have so many kids and they are single parents, they don't even have time to sit down and teach their kids. Now, some do, some don't. Especially when you have multiple kids. A lot of parents just don't teach their kids nothing. I teach my kids. I teach my son and I teach my daughters. We all, we both teach them. But like, listen, this is how you do this. Watch me when I talk on the phone, when I'm making appointments. 
for y'all, for me, how I talk on the phone. Watch us how we go to the ATM. Watch us how we go in the grocery store and pay for our food, coupons, how to iron clothes, how to cook, how to make up your bed, how to do laundry, how to fold your clothes, how to vacuum, how to sweep, how to mop. There's a lot of people that don't know how to do that. There's a lot of people. You'll be surprised. There's so many people. Some of the shows that I've seen, some people don't know how to cook. They get mad when they significant other. But like, can you cook? They be like, we, you know I don't know how to cook. And that's a shame. It's just a shame. Because I'm trying to tell you, when you get in a marriage, there's more to it than just looks. Because looks ain't going to keep you here. You know, we can see that for ourselves. There's a lot of celebrities, they, they, people say they the most pretty in the world, but don't know how to do nothing else, but just sit there and look pretty. Looks fade, they come and go, gravity take over your body as you get older. What do you have besides looks? You got to have some substance. We have to have substance besides just looks. As you get older, men want women with substance. We got to have something besides that. We got to have something else besides looks because looks come and go. You got to have something. Women look for something else too besides looks. You got to be able to provide. You got to be able to bring something to the table. You see what I'm saying? So, um... I'm glad that I brought, you know, I'm doing this part two to my depression um, and getting the help that I am getting the help. It's making me feel so good about myself and I say that I'm going to come back and do my YouTube channel. I'm going to do it the right way. This time, I want to introduce new content um, to my channel but I'm working out some kinks. I am working out the kink in my um, intro. I'm going to kind of scale it down back because it is a little too long. But I'm working on that as well. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit more sit down videos. Some story times as well. Some goofy story times. And some more serious story times as well you guys. So um, I don't want to drag up this video. Okay, so um, today is Thursday, what today, September the 29th, I want to say, September the 29th, yeah, September the 29th, so we got a couple of more things that's coming up, um, I'm going to be doing a travel vlog here pretty soon, so stay tuned for that, um, I think next month actually two travel vlogs for next month it's getting cold pretty it's getting cold here it got cold real quick normally it still be hot it still be hot like later on in the afternoon normally it don't start getting cold to like mid-october but it got cold real quick like today we got a like a lot of wind because of the hurricane What's the thing? Ian? I think it's Ian. So I get some <laughs> some people pronouncing that thing, that hurricane so much, so many names. I can't keep up with y'all keep my sister in prayer. She is in Tampa, Florida. I think um, they went to Orlando. She, I think she said she went to Orlando to get safe. So hopefully you know that she's safe there. I did. We did. I did message her this morning. She did message us early in the morning. She said they're getting a lot of wind and rain. There was one picture I seen to where um, some part of Florida, like the water, like the water was over the roof. I love Florida, but I can't see myself living there. To be honest, I, I, I let me tell you. I almost moved to Florida, you guys, about a couple of years ago. And I think the most high that he did worked it out to where I didn't I didn't move. He knew I knew better. And he know he wanted better for me. So I'm glad that I didn't move. I'll do a story time about that later on too. Whew, Lord. 
But anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. And make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new content to the channel, you guys. Also, make sure y'all go subscribe to our family gaming channel. I did connect the link in my About Me section. It's called Rich, R-I-C-H, Nix, N as in X, I X Family Gaming Channel. So we got, we do have a family gaming channel. So my husband, me, and our children, we do do games over there. We added something new to the channel. So make sure y'all subscribe. And if y'all subscribe to the channel, make sure y'all comment and down below in the comment section. Let them know that me and Mama 3 have sent you guys over there. Okay, so go over there and show some love, some support. All right, so make sure y'all thumbs up this video. And tell me what you think about this, um, my video. And if you want me to go into more details, comment down below as well. And I will be doing a story time. I may be going live. I don't know just yet. But I got to get that set up. So, I'm trying to just see what I'm going to talk about in my live video. I might just do a Q&A or some, something. I think of something. But anyways, I will see y'all next time on my next video. Thank y'all for tuning in. Bye. Things that I've been through. And I realized that with my depression, it started at a very young age. Even though I didn't know.